Hi, welcome back to our Art of Painting series and some Garden of Flowers. And today we're going to do some daisies and some forget-me-nots. I'm going to be using my same uh, Art of Painting type of palette, which I have my six painted simply colors uh, that we start out with. Our red, violet, Napa red light, Hansa yellow, Thedal blue, black and white. I add to that some of my uh, pine green, which comes out of the Art of Painting series. Some burnt sienna and some yellow oxide. I've used those in several of the lessons, so those of you following right along, you know exactly what we're doing. I have an 11 by 14 panel here. This is a regular Super MDF panel, and then I've just given it a coat of light gray, which is one of my basic toned uh, colors. A lot of artists like to start their canvases off toned. I like to start my boards off also with it, just a tone, a general tone, and I like the black and white and a little yellow oxide, or if you have the heritage background colors, you can just take medium white and medium and a light gray and add it together about one to one, and you get a beautiful color like this. And then I just sanded it lightly with 150 grit sandpaper, and we're ready to go. I'm going to use my fusion brushes today. I'm going to use a three-quarter inch uh, fusion brush. I'm going to add some um, some looks of some sky color. We're going to be using our palette knife with this. We're going to be using uh, our brush. We're going to do a nice creative background, but I want to put some blue back here. Now, my plan is to put some daisies up through here and trail them down with some forget-me-nots and stuff. So up into this corner, there won't be any forget-me-nots. So putting a little, and the forget-me-nots, of course, are the blue color. So putting some blues up here will make the, will carry the color through the painting and uh, will give me a nice look. So, and we'll, we'll uh, just plow in a little bit of white right in there for right now. And uh, then we'll uh, take some of that color and lightly push it around some of the other edges here of the painting here like this and down and let it trail off to some of those grays we might even add a little bit more of that gray a little black and a little bit of the warm yellow oxide doesn't have to be exactly the same gray but we'll just trail that off into some of these gray colors and that'll incorporate the gray from our background back up in here as well. I like to do creative backgrounds like this. I like my my brush just to kind of find its way and and uh, I will add a lot of uh, palette knife background to this as well. So I will take colors like this and and uh, I will push those through here at some different angles like this to create some different modeling effects to the background here just like this and that just helps add more interest and variation to the painting. We'll push some of that through there. Maybe some of that gray up in here as well. So right up in here, I'm planting those flowers, those daisies. And uh, we might start some greens up in here as well. Just start to push some of this green around where those daisies are going to go. And we're going to trail some of that down here with some forget-me-nots down, trailing down. Maybe coming this way a little bit more first and then bending down this way. And uh, we'll use, I use my hands, my fingers. I'll incorporate colors into these backgrounds in different ways. Here, I, you know, like I've said before in so many of the other videos, I sometimes I really like the background, how the background came out, and I don't want to put anything in it. By the time I put my flowers on and stuff, I end up covering up some of my my feeling of my flowers and and uh, it's really kind of I mean my background and it's really kind of sad because I do enjoy the background as well we'll put some light right down here I like to carry that down just little expressions of that light little what I call sparks of color down through into something like this and that just carries that color out through there and uh, gives you a nice uh, feeling lighten and airy it up to the painting a little bit so little sparks of color so I really like to work these colors in here and then we'll get even more and since we have that um, blue in that background having some nice cool blue greens in here would be pretty as well with uh, um, this painting and so we'll put some of that and then let's lighten up some of our blue green here so thedal blue and a little bit of the pine green and some light color here nice uh, kind of a blue green tone color here and we'll push push those edges a little softer here because we don't know exactly where the flowers are going to be yet so we'll keep the edges out outside that area kind of soft so all right so that sets that that up let's set a little a little bit of our blue green back up in here it has some toned colors of that I mean some cool color 
happening right back there. That's nice. Some cool colors happening right back here. Nice. Right up in there and letting that fade away there. And I love those little spots of that light coming through like right here. Boom. You know, that's just move your, your knife in many ways. And I'm using very thick paint here. So that pushes that down like that. That's nice. That light kind of travels through. You can give the light more of a direction to it too, like this. If you want, sometimes I'll, I'll do that here and through with a little bit of a direction to it. Sometimes I'll let it model. Sometimes I use my hand like this and soften it. I just love these modeled backgrounds like this. Now, let's go in and we'll do a little sketching. I'm going to grab a smaller brush, like maybe a six flat. You can use a filbert or a flat. Let's go in and let's do a little bit of uh, sketching. Let's take some of our burnt sienna and some pine green. It's a beautiful sketching type of color that I like to do sometimes. And I use it for stems and stuff like that as well. But uh, we're going to have a, one of our main uh, daisies is going to set the, the feel of the painting right up into this area here. So I'll just kind of sketch kind of an oval, just mix those colors together a little bit. Sometimes if I get too much paint, I'll just back it out a bit, back out a bit of that paint just like that. So I know my daisy will sit right up there, right up into this area, maybe right up like that. And... Uh, and we'll have a maybe a back turned one here that will take the viewer keep show some interest to the painting here but keep the viewer coming back this other way so that'll work there let's get some more burnt sienna into that green here and get a little dollop of that put that right there okay so then we'll have a, a turned one coming down this other way here and uh, then we're going to just trail off here and come down and come down and come down here and we'll start a whole bunch of our um, little uh, forget-me-nots and stuff coming out and little ones coming out there with a couple little uh, stems of this and I'll use this as more of a woody stem and I know they're more green but I'll start them out a little bit more woody here because I like the colors of it and the burnt sienna is a complement to the blue so it'll work really nice with those little um, uh, forget-me-nots. Now we, when we're going to paint quite a few of the forget-me-nots we want some variations in our blue and our phthalo blue is a blue-green so let's add a little red-violet to that over here we'll make more of a blue-violet and we can add a little bit of light a little white to that so we get some variations to our colors here and Let's uh, take some of these blues and let's just pop some of those blues into here right now. Right into this area here. Boom, boom, boom. And just set up some blue movements of some blues. And the forget-me-nots are quite a bit smaller than daisies. Um, I might want to do another little daisy like right down in here. So... I'll keep that in mind. Matter of fact, let's just back out just a bit of that. And we'll maybe turn a, a turn daisy down like that here. Let's uh, put some yellow here into our um, into our centers of our daisies here so we get a little bit better feel for them. So you see, I, I paint and see where my hand is on my brush? It's way back there. I like to keep that way back there this will be a turned one down that'll be one opening up right into this area here there we go and um, we can even uh, you know casually apply some of these blues and stuff in here right now uh, just because we don't need to have petals yet we're not we're just applying tones and colors we're not really painting the forget-me-nots yet and so I'll just push that color around or we can even use our bigger brush here and just drag through a little bit like this just to create a softer little edge of these and colors of these in here so we'll just just work that color a little bit like that and I'm painting edges and so I'm watching my my colors and my edges let's get a 
a little bit more of our, our blue-green kind of color, a little change in color here, a little change in the tone. We'll add a few, a, a little bit of that in there, and see that gives a different modeling look to those flowers there, like that some lighter tones and colors of it right down here where we're just going to let that just fade away out here like that there are those little guys coming down like that let's put some tones of that up in here and of course we'll have more contrasting tones as well but this will just get us started here and see we'll just take that and just brush through that a couple times in a couple different directions and cause the modeling of the colors together. What we call the modeling. Well, we don't lose the tone. They're not blending. They're just incorporating together. They're incorporating the interest and stuff together. Here. Here we go. Like that. That's nice. Here. And um, we'll have, maybe we'll put a little more green out through here like this just little touches of that heavier green nice heavy strokes of that green that'll be our leaves and stuff and we'll put some greens model up some of your greens right into your blues there as well because you'll have leaves and stuff coming when we go to paint those little forget-me-nots you'll have some leaves and stuff coming through here and there and this this helps model all those colors together here. There we go. Pull some of that through. Just give it so you get a real nice. Now we have a nice, very very soft um, feeling for the um, for the flowers and everything here. Now I'm going to start to just pushing it out here with this daisy. And what this is going to do is just kind of set the feeling of the what I want this daisy. And I wanted a little longer petals here on the side. Don't want to make it quite that big here. So we'll have some variation to our petals there. And this one will be a backed turned one here, so we really won't have a center there. So we'll have it a little longer here. Some pushes out through there. We'll have a calyx of it showing up right here. And um, we'll just give an indication of that right now. This one that's here, we'll push in and out here and push some of the... And what I'm also doing is pushing some of that excess color out so it makes it easier to paint. If you have too much color in there, it's a little difficult to paint and shape the flower. So this will uh, help us get rid of some of the excess so we have not too much, but I like the greens and stuff carrying in. Like I've showed you before in other lessons, I like to paint in and out. I paint in and out all the time. And it's the painting in and out that um, really gives the nice looks to the flowers here. So, you know, so, and we can do negative painting. We have a lot that we can do, but you can begin to see the, the daisies here, how they will, how they will form together. As a matter of fact, I might, uh, just for balance, what I, I might change this just a bit. And see, it's easy to do. I might push this daisy. I'm going to raise this daisy up more formal. And I like to do that towards the center of interest here, make something in more formal. So I'm going to put a da I'm going to move this whole daisy right here. Easy thing to do. We'll just model these colors back like this. Let's take a little bit of our blues, our various blues here. Let's just toss those right in here, and model those colors right up into here. Okay, and let's just reset that daisy. And this is a good way to, you know, when you're developing your own designs where you can look and see. And as I did that, I was like, okay, I've just got one, two, three got here. I wanted to put something in what we call more formal, one overriding the other one a little bit. And that gives you a better anchor point. And then we'll trail down with these forget-me-nots here. We'll trail down. So we'll point this one kind of like this. Almost a little divorce situation, what I call a divorce situation, where the two are almost on opposing poles here. Uh, maybe we can change that just a touch. We'll go down more here. That might be better here. We'll pull some of that dark in now. And uh, we can uh, use, I and mean, you have to clean your finger a lot when you do this. So let's set this one out down just a bit more out like that. That'll be better. There we go. Now, 
I will uh, come in and I'm going to set a little bit of contrast. Now inside the daisy here we can have a little burnt sienna and a little green. We'll set some center contrast and shadow in, in here. This is just a different way I paint the daisy as well. Sometimes I go right into the petals and sometimes I do this. I start my contrasting colors in and out and move this color in and out like this. Kind of sketchy. I paint all different kinds of ways. Many different techniques. And this always helps my art change. I'm a big advocate for always changing the way you paint to keep your, your art fresh and moving forward and change and try new things and techniques. And artists have done that for hundreds of years. You know, they're constantly evolving and trying new things. And as new pigments came on, they tried those. And, you know, that's just part of being an artist is constantly evolving. Don't just paint one technique all your life and get locked into that. So that works pretty good there. Let's take some of that. Let's make more of our darker blue-green here. And let's come right out through here where we're going to have uh, some of this edges of this daisy. And let's just drop in some blue-green and some movement out here like that and let that come out there. And that color come out. Little spots of that color here. So you can do a little negative painting like this and make that daisy come about, uh, come alive a little bit. And you know the negative painting, I did a whole series uh, of it in the um, Art of Painting, the Mastering Roses series of negative painting, how I paint my roses with negative colors as well. And uh, you know we can get a lot accomplished with negative painting, and that just gives a uh, you know, before you go into all your lights, that negative painting can add so much to your painting here before you go into just jumping into lights and painting something. And um, so I'm a, high, I'm a big advocate of negative painting as a, a wonderful painting technique. Let's get some of these nice blue violets in here. A little blue, a little thedal blue and violet. That'll be uh, the colors of our of our, and we can put some in with the knife here too. That'll be some nice contrasting colors there for our um, forget-me-nots there. Small little flowers. Let's soften some of that in. Some of that movement in there. There, like that. Okay, and we'll drop a little bit of that out here. Soften just a bit of that. And Push that around and pull in like this. Sometimes I'll just pull in like that just to get that movement back in like that. Just to, I like those edges. I like to just destroy those edges. Make sure your finger's kind of clean and just pull through and push that light right down like that. That gives a nice movement down through there. And, all, and many times I'll just leave it like that. So let's... Uh, Get some of that cool color, cool blues and stuff, and maybe slightly to the violet side here. We'll add a little bit of white to that. And that will look great onto our daisies here as well as a cool and to the shadowy parts or the back sides of them. Maybe some of that into our centers around the daisy here. Here we go. Round into here. And now my paint here that I've been using is starting to tack up just a bit, get a little sticky. And that's what I wait for when I paint the daisies. I like it to get a little sticky. And uh, now I'm just going to push some of this to the side here for a second. We'll grab some white. I'll model it in with some of the blues and burnt siennas. It gives you beautiful grays, beautiful gray colors here. And I'll use that to... Um, Come right in here and, and start some of the petals of the daisy here. Grab some more white. My white is just nice and thick here. And we'll just start some of our petals here in to the daisy here. In like that. And I won't make the, I try not to make too much of perfect petals here because I've got a lot of, um, you know, these uh, forget-me-nots to paint. And uh, I, I want to uh, kind of set them in place too before I go too perfect into the daisies or 
and everything so we'll, we'll just kind of set up uh, the idea of the daisy here of them and uh, then we'll see how that goes and then paint from there so maybe these are just little edges here and they come down this little edge will come in it'll sit back behind that one and then uh, come out here and sometimes I pull out on the daisy that gives you one look sometimes I I pull uh, in I do both pulling in and out and so we'll we'll do that here a little bit longer on the sides we'll make it turn here a little bit longer on the sides makes it turn and I'll paint in and out a couple of times as well when I paint daisies like this I like to paint in and out a few times here there like that here and let's shorten this one down back here shorten this back and, and see I can just shorten it really easy with some of that blue there there's like that some of those colors come out here just I don't like that just make a pretty little daisy and um, we'll add some back ones here and just turn this one ever so little like that a little bit lighter light right into the center here and then we'll just let that just turn and maybe a touch or two to the back side there as that daisy turns we'll restate some of that uh, calyx there like that in and out a bit and I'll pull in and out a bit and uh, you know I like to like I say incorporate the color so I worked it I work it a few times back and forth here work it a few times those colors back and forth in and out got a dirty finger there I'm gonna have to put up a I don't wash my brush in water or anything like that even though I use acrylics but I might have to put in a wash basin for my finger I'll tell you there we go put a little shadow up from the base there like that that will allow us to get some pretty strokes here light textury type strokes here onto the daisy here and loosen that one up a bit just put a little bit of that shadow tone in there and lift out that does so much so a lot after I do that is I'll, I'll, I'll come in and I'll paint out like this and uh, create some different uh, rock and roll and angles and turns and stuff to the daisies as I'm painting them this way so I paint them back and forth back and forth here so here we'll pull them in like that and in lots of little strokes and movement here in and out like that and you can um, you know like I say you can use the dark and come out you can use more of a chisel and make them look like they have more petals but like I said I'm gonna be a little careful here for just a little bit while I build this so that um, I uh, want to get some of my forget-me-nots in there first but right now I want that this is dropping down a little bit at an angle there so I want to reposition this one just a bit and I I like doing this because I like resetting it like this because it just adds a little bit more interest to it. So here as I restroke that again, see I get a little different look to the petal and I constantly do that until I get a look that I like. And I may come out here and put a little tip out onto the to some of these petals out here like that and pull them in. I get all different kinds of looks to them. And I'll pull and, and just by moving your brush in and out like this and and be willing to to paint it several times that's where you get all the beautiful color movements but you have to be willing to paint it several times and realize that 
you know, you're you're going to be doing that, you know. And a bigger, a different size brush makes a, a big difference to it. Um, here I'm using a smaller brush, so it's very easy for me to get little details and stuff like that to it. But, uh, you know, you could use a different size brush, bigger brush, and get softer looks to them as well. So that's kind of pretty there light color coming there I want to put the though the light of this one up on top of that one so I want to lift that back off there you can also lift it off from the shadow coming back out that way but see this movement that you get here that's what I'm looking for that kind of movement into those colors in and out we'll pull that yellow center color right out into that daisy petal there and that's what we're looking for, that crossing and that movement there, that color. Now, that's what makes them fun and pretty. Here. There we go. Like that. Let's take a little bit of that yellow oxide and build that center again right there. A little bit on this one. Build that around. Maybe a bit of our burnt sienna pine green there. Let's just reshadow that right there. Pull some of that out on that side. A little bit of that blue I think would be pretty. A little bit more of that blue gray on this side of the daisy would be pretty. Make them, if I have that blue here and that side of the background, that if you look at it, that's what makes that daisy look a little bit more transparent. Because I used some of the colors that are coming right in here from the background. And when you do that, that's what makes them look a little bit more transparent and lighter weight. And so it's a building here. So maybe I'll come back and hit little light edges right up here like this. And uh, not paint down in too much here. Like that. And just make soft little, soft little daisies there. Maybe a little blue and burnt sienna. We stayed a little shadow there, right in there like that. That looks very nice. That's coming. We can take a little of our Hansa Yellow right on the corner of our brush here and start to tap a little and see what our brighter yellow is going to look like. Right in there, build that up in there and tap some of that around. Build that up quite light right in that very center here you can tap some red sometimes I'll put the reddish centers in there sometimes you put that what I call a little crater daisy that little shadow that is right in there as well we'll tap some of this right on the lower side here that will help us with the turn and then it'll go right down into its shadow so more yellow oxide maybe touch of burnt sienna here right down into its shadowy colors down there like that and a little bit more of a shadow in there a little bit of that blue in there it makes that nice transparent look just need that movement there like that there we go maybe a uh, little light edges here just little light edges like this and pull in just a bit make it make it look like the tips of the petals here just get hit with a little bit of light before they go in there that's also a neat thing so you don't have to pull light down the whole petal you can just hit the little tips there maybe we'll uh, take some of that little light right here and hit the tips right out here with a little textury look there and then just lift off right into that uh, there little hit. Now you can also do negative painting to kind of do those edges as well. So, you know, we can take some of our, let's take some of our pine green and blue here, nice dark blue green, and you can use a little negative painting in like this to set some of that daisy petal in there. Maybe a little bit of that color in like this, just stroking out, will get that transparency to that daisy, and we can turn or lift up that whole side there make that look like it's lifted <coughs> kind of bending up here pull down a bit 
there like that. That's going pretty good. I like a little more contrast in towards my center. So a little more burnt sienna and pine green right into that center there. Let's drop in some additional contrast there. And work that out. Very casual. Here. Nice contrast and maybe a little gray just to soften in through it. There. It's good. And a lot of daisies have greens and yellow greens around there, but this burnt sienna looks really nice there as well. So I'll use that and just soften some of that in. A few strokes there. It's going good. We'll use just a touch of that burnt sienna into some of this calyx here. That one, that's good. Now let's go back down and um, we'll start to work on... Uh, we're not done with these yet, but we'll start to work on some of the uh, uh, little forget-me-nots here. So we'll take some of our blues, our blues and whites here. And we want to create blues, blue violets and whites. So I'm going to take some and model some of these colors together here. So I'm going to get some various blues, different types of blues here. And uh, we can start putting like the little, the little petals. Now, these guys are actually a little smaller than that. They're very small little five blossom or uh, five little blossoms to that and here and we need some uh, darker ones too here little five petal blossoms just little blossoms uh, here as they get out to the outside where and you know we don't need to make perfect as you get to some of these you don't need to make perfect little blossoms out here. We're going to let those colors just kind of soften like that so the, the viewer will see, okay, there's some, um, maybe there's some back there. You don't have to paint them specifically. We'll paint some lighter ones here, just little five petals or variation of the five petals up here as well. Change the color a bit. Sometimes have some dark ones here. Some ideas of those. And I just want to casually come in here and set a few petals. You know, once you get a few, then the rest of them could just be marks, what I call brush marks, uh, movement marks that suggest that that's what these are, little, little forget-me-nots. You don't have to have... You know, once you get a few of them in, uh, you know, a few perfect ones in, you don't need a whole bunch of them. So we can come down and we'll set a few here, coming down here like this and like this. And down, make some, sure some of that shows up underneath those daisies there. And down through here, little, little marks, little light, some light petals on some here. And just let this start to fade out here into, uh, as you come down here, we'll start to let it fade out into uh, the background. We don't need very much down here. Maybe a mark or two or a little flower here. Just idea, but so it's just kind of diminishing down here. We'll take some... Um, what we said before is you got to have some greens in between there and maybe a few ideas of some stems and stuff coming as well. So I'm not done with these little flowers, but we're just going to uh, add some additional, before we get going too far, some additional stems and movements and stuff down here, coming down, trailing down here, like this, and out here. And, you know, so we might swing out like that and put a little idea of one coming out there. Stepping out away from it a little and, and putting some smaller little touches of it like that. Kind of lighten up your feeling of them. Here. And we'll put 
put some right out through here some coming right down here here now they have little yellow and um, white center so let's drop in a few of those those really help could uh, break up we we'll get some Hansa yellow some white some yellow oxide kind of model that together those really those little centers really kind of help break up all of the blue so we'll start to pop some of that in here and you'll start seeing the little flowers start to appear of course we still have to highlight them and stuff so but you'll start to see little flowers appear here there we go and you can just kind of tap some of that around here now just a little bit of that Coming through, and we can use a little edge of uh, the blue and some white, like right in the corner of the brush here, and you can use that to make some more specific petals uh, to some of these little flowers. Let's get some more blue into that. A little lighter blue here, edge with some white, or model it up so it's not a perfect. Uh, not a perfect little uh, stroke of it and model it up there. There we go. Let's put a little yellow right into that one. There. That's pretty. And so this, now that I look at this one that's right here, I'm going to move its center and up back just a bit and we're going to oval this one just a bit more here reduce its size just a touch oval it a bit more that will turn it a bit more so let's just move that and I always when I paint like this it's I, I kind of really just kind of find my way because I'm not looking at anything other than a couple of the flowers daisies and forget-me-nots there so I know they're colors and their positions but I don't have this design done anywhere so I'm kind of winging it here and and building it and that's the way I like to paint and but that means I also am going to uh, you know adjust a few things now and then through the painting here through the process I know I'm going to do that so there we go that looks pretty good out there like that that's pretty. Let's put a little brighter yellow out here onto the edges of that. There, like that. That's nice. And if you want to have more, uh, you know, more of a petally look to this daisy, you can uh, move the color in and out there and, and uh, do more strokes, more uh, strokes to the petals. But I like to have this slightly softer look here. That's where I'm going for. I'm going to put a little darker blue right in here. Maybe there's some darker petals here of some other forget-me-nots right there. That'll create some contrast. Let's get some of that right in here. Create that contrast right there as well. Use that even for a little negative painting here on this daisy. There, like that. And a few light strokes. here to say there's some light little forget-me-not petals there model a little yellow there they also have little tiny bits of white and stuff around them which you can just touch a little here and there on just a corner I like to rather than using like a small round or something I like to use just the corner of this brush so that's not perfect so they um, just uh, get is it, nothing gets the same. That's nothing is the same. There we go. There, that one got a bit big, but. Just use your finger and small it down a touch. 
Here, we'll add some smaller ones. I guess you can paint them bigger and you can call it miniature daisies if you want, but. And you start to get the variety here by using the different colors. Maybe a little bit more of the violet -y kind of color there. You start to get a better variety to your little uh, forget-me-nots here. And that's nice. Here. Get some like colors and here little turned ones coming out there we can don't forget to add like little stems in here as well little stem movements actually there's the forget me not stems are quite thick but we'll just add some ideas and movements of them they also so they have that center that yellowy center and then a kind of a darker little blue or violet kind of dot into that as well so we can uh, touch no you don't have to do every single one but let's make it kind of purpley here red violet potato blue and make a darker little touch into that center not every single one but see that does add quite a bit to the to the flower see that there that's nice now let's um before we go back to those uh, daisies one more time let's go into uh, some of our greens well we have to we should you we have yellows into the center so let's take some of that yellow right into our pine green here and make some nice warm yellow greens here as well and we'll use those for a few like little daisy leaves here coming out here with a few of those and uh, maybe a little more pine green and stuff as a shadow up against the edge of that and you can negative paint that in there to get that edge of that daisy there get a little roughly edge to that daisy here some of that nice contrasty color in there coming out like that and uh, maybe we'll put a few little warm strokes right out here but then also some we'll get some of those cooler strokes and and red violet into that pine green and blue nice cool deep uh, blue green blue green by itself is a little cooler but then when you add that red violet in there man you get a nice cool color here that looks great here we'll just pull that in and out a bit so it's almost like a, a little bit of negative painting here shape up these carry that color in and out go I like the variety uh, as I get some of these strokes the variety of those petals coming in like that. that that makes them look nice let's expand this center over just a bit to incorporate those petals a bit more there like that maybe a little bit of our cooler shadow right in there and see I just lift that just touch with your finger there and you'll get a lot of a lot of color you know a lot of contrast and stuff coming back through there like that and um, now if you want more power the other thing that you can do you step up in size now I was painting that with um, uh, with my six 
and so I could step up in size here too if I wanted to give a, the pedals a little bit more power here and movement there I can step up that way here and uh, take a look to see if I like those particular strokes and soften some of that back in there that softens your movement just a bit and sometimes that's that's good so try a few of it with it and you can take a larger brush like this and turn it on its on its end and um, make a different stroke but you know make a different size strokes but sometimes the, the larger stroke will get that since my my flowers here are pretty soft I'm just I'm just playing now to to find what it is I want to do with uh, the actual daisy itself here how much of the power I want to give them. I want this to curve just a bit up like that. Those strokes out like that. So that, but I've got a little bit of a flat edge here, which I want to push this out so it's not flat. Curve it slightly here. Yeah, that's better. So you see it gives a different look to it and you can use the bigger brush and pull out like this and pull these colors out into the petals and they'll go out more unevenly and it's uh, um, slightly different rather than painting with one. I, a lot of times I'll paint with one brush but then there's some times where I'll say okay I want to come back and just kind of soften stuff so maybe I want to put up bigger softer petals right up here onto that daisy right there onto the side and we'll lift its calyx back up here. And that will give um, a different look to that one. And maybe, uh, you know, a little petal comes out here to the side like that. And like you might see on a daisy, one or two coming out like that. One coming up like that. So you might see those around. And the big brush can give you some a, a little bit different look than that smaller brush there as well. So... Your job is to add the interest and in. so you know painting the same object with one and and a lot of people start big and then go to smaller details and sometimes I go in reverse I don't know I, I like to do that as well but sometimes I go completely in reverse and that just made that pedal really stiff so going in reverse is good as well let's just add a little more contrast and it's, you know, now it's to the point where you're adding contrast, looking at it and adding contrast here. These are all fun techniques, though. Painting techniques that I use all in our Garden of Flowers, our Art of, Art of Painting series, as I work through things and get different looks using the uh, edges and corners brush different brushes and a lot of color moving through I will take light colors like this when I'm all done and I'll say okay I want to come back in here and just go bang with some of that light right through right through where that flower was there and everything and maybe just put a little idea of that flower back up on top of that there but I'll pull some of that stroke of that light through there uh, you make the painting look lighter so um, for example Let's take some of that light now, and let's come right in here. I like all in here, but maybe I'll pull some of that light right through that painting here like this that we see. Boom, right through here. And see, that carries that light coming right down through here. It breaks up some of the heaviness that we started to get there, which is a natural thing that happens. That That's pretty natural in the painting that can happen like that. And let's just pull that through. Maybe even take our brush here and pull some of that through. We got some of that blues and some of that light coming through. Let's get some of our grays into that. Pretty green grays into that. That's pretty. Get that other color. Pull some of that through there like that. Through like that. There. Now, now we build, now we can... Um, I'll go back to my, my six here, and then I can set a few blue petaled flowers right over here, kind of soft here, 
out here like this, but let some of that light travel through. So sometimes during the during the process, and and you'll uh, see in all the books and stuff that I do during the process, I will come back and add some strokes of light right through something, and uh, and, and incorporate that light coming down through, and then put a flower or two right up in front of it. We can get some nice little yellow there on that flower. Nice little yellow. Let some of these back ones here go. Kind of soft little ideas of them. Boom, boom, boom. Out through here, this soft little model color. Get some of your green leaves in there. Your greens. Leave some little fractured color like this and little stems. And see, that just lightens that whole area of the painting up. So I take my background right back into it again. Something that I never did as a, in all the years that I was a decorative painter, and still am a decorative painter, but there's still um, there's something that I never really considered doing, and now that I do, and now I do, here. So, now this one has got to shorten down just a bit if I want that daisy to turn bit more. Let's just turn that just a bit more. Yeah. There we go. It's got an oval up. Paint that oval and it turns. There we go. Paint that oval and that turns. Well, that's kind of nice. Maybe um, idea of a back turn daisy right back through here again maybe you see a little bit of a yellow like center into it let's just make a casual one back here you might see a little edge of it here yeah. right in there like that just a little push back casual edge of a daisy and let's take out let's take our gray and let's take out a little bit of that of this uh, blue here we'll lighten up that whole area here take our background color just take it right back in there lighten up just a bit there maybe put a spark of light coming through here like that so that daisy can uh, come up here just a bit more Show up just a touch more there. That'll be pretty. And we'll just take our edge of our brush here and we'll just draw a little stem right down to it. Here, break it apart just a touch. Fracture it just a touch. Maybe a soft little leaf coming off of it and down. It's kind of nice. Maybe a little tiny touch of the Hansa brighter yellow onto it there. And you can put some back up over here, maybe a back one right back here. That'll help lighten up some of the blue. If you feel your blue still a little heavy, you know, we'll, we'll uh, lighten that up. Let's get that light strike going through there again, too. Right in through there like that. And, um, you know, maybe just give the idea of a little turn daisy back here as well. Maybe there's one turned right there. You see just a bit of it. And let's take just a touch of that yellow. You'll see just a bit of it there like that's its center. Stroke this up just a touch. There. Maybe a little touch of that Hansa onto it. There's its center. Don't forget if it's turned like that, you should give it a little calyx. Maybe a little stem line to it there. A little stem line to it. Maybe a few little leaves here afterwards or a little edge out here. Like maybe you could just see the edges of the petals here. Very, very casual look to it there that's nice so you see the daisies coming through there just a bit and um, 
Any last little bits you want to do down here? These flowers trailing off. You can have darker blues in there for some more contrast. But you don't need to make, especially when you're out to here, you don't need to make a whole bunch of petals because we want these to be soft out here. So we'll uh, get some of our darker blues in here. See, and that just, that just pops those daisies right out. You get those darker blues in there and get some of those colors in there like that. That just pops those out. There. Just kind of tap that around. Nice thalo blue. Very bright and dark blue. Powerful color for these... Uh, nice uh, forget-me-nots here but again I'm, I'm not painting perfect little forget-me-nots you can put a few petals on but don't get carried away with it because it's a balancing act between the the flowers where you're painting the flowers and the, uh, uh, the forget-me-nots and the daisies you know how much you're going to show how much you're going to build them it's a little bit of a balancing act here good we'll add some final little touches of shadowy contrast here to our uh, daisies a little dark green a little burnt sienna a little red violet some dark contrasty colors in and out here like that always like to do that right around the center there and just tap that around tap a little of the yellow back up over it soften that in there that's good now overall when I look at this I was like oh I kind of really like everything my petals of my daisy here when I look at it, if I do a little self critique here are uh, are very even and um, rhythmic here so really what I should try to do is try to maybe uh, separate some of those just a touch here. And so I'm just going to use a little background color here and push that in and out here. So I create a little um, uh, background look into that again, that backgrounding look right in there. And you see already that opens up and makes the the daisy look a little different there that even allows me to put a little blue contrast back in here like there's some blues here now let's just come in and reset that see I, this is what I love to do the part of the painting where I just come in and refine a little bit now let's try not to uh, make these these petals here uh, we'll leave a little space here and there in between them. But i got to watch it against my... Uh, I'm going to go to my bigger brush. I'm going to watch it against my uh, forget-me-nots and stuff here. That's better. So it gives a, a, a little bit more of a petal look to that there. So it's no, they're not exactly perfect here. Put a little bit of that light color here and just stroke a few of these in and out here. There. There, like that. That's pretty. That's getting what I want. Just a little bit of an edge out here. Here, like that. Let's take a little bit of that brown swirl out. There. Back into that. So it's different, you know. So if you look at, you know, through all the different types of daisies and stuff that I paint, and boy, I paint a lot of them. You know, there's, 
you'll see I, I use a lot of different colors and I use a lot of different techniques and so I you know I have some daisy techniques I like more than the others but I never try to um, as an artist I never try to always just use the one I like I try to get all kinds of different techniques that's what I'm trying to do here is get just a little different look here and I like that and let's put some of that right out here onto this one right out Sometimes that bigger brush works nice, especially here towards the end. That's working quite nice. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that there. And um, now we can lighten up any of the, the last little bit of it here with, take some pine green, some of your burnt sienna. This is that nice greeny kind of brown here and this is something I like to do um, just to get that we'll get a little woody effect to it here and just we have a lot of negative space over here so that pulls your eye over here like that and uh, gives that um, nice draggy um, or they're like stems and uh, woody type stems which are just great just and it uh, adds little visual parts to it, little um, what I call sparks of interest of color here. And it just drags some of that out here. I, I like that here. We'll just drag some up here like this and just break and fracture the line to touch like that. Here, and we'll just break and fracture that line out there. Just add, and you can add um, little tiny white flowers if you want. You know, there's all kinds of stuff you can do here. But see, by giving this little broken lines like this and stuff that just uh, breaks up and just adds a, a little bit more interest out there. And we can... Uh, fine up uh, some of our leaves some of our nice shadowy colors on our leaves here we have that warm make sure we we do have that nice warm yellow green here make sure we see that pretty clearly here so I get a nice variation in my leaves here nice warm Yellow green, a little light color with that here. Little light sparky colors, touches. There. I like those colors, like see right in through here, just go bang with some of that light green right in there. That just sets that in. Let's take some of this and just go bang right in there. Little touches of it in there. There. Like that. Around and there you have a pretty fun little painting. This was a fun, just about an hour painting here just to try some of these different effects. Get some nice brighter yellow green out. Uh, in here, warm green, let it play against some of that cool uh, blues there as that's falling down here to the to the end and stuff. So there like that. There. And uh, you can pop out any more of the um, little forget-me-nots. Like I might just pop... Uh, a little more white, pop this one a little bit more. It's right there towards the front, so we'll do that one up. There we go. Put some right in there, little angled lines and petals up now that I have. Nice modely color there. There, 
and then it's back to just whatever you want to do. I'll just take a little bit of that down. It's blue, and so you let that just fade right away down to there like that, and you get a pretty little painting. Don't forget to have, though, just a little bit of that blue showing up inside those daisies here. So just a touch or so of those strokes. See how pretty that is? Just a little bit of that in there. It just takes that daisy, harmonizes it right with the, uh, put some of that right in there, harmonizes it right with the other flowers. There. Just looks great. Add a stroke or two of those in there. Just harmonize. Use that up on the cool shadow side there, like that. Just looks great. And <clears throat> one last thing, I'll pop a little more yellow onto this. Maybe a little yellow and light right in that very center there. Just to give it ultimate contrast. Right here. There, like that. And I'm going to call that. That's a nice little painting. Fun little painting there. We'll call that. Thanks very much for joining me. Look for all of our other types of videos and stuff on JansenArtStore.com. You can go visit us on our uh, Painted Simply uh, YouTube channel. We have lots and lots of videos there. And, um, uh, well, we'll see. We have about over 200 on there right now. We have over 600 lessons and stuff on the Jansen Art Store. So, and if you can't find anything, you can always email us at jansenartstudio at aol.com, and we'll help you find it. Okay, till next time, thanks for painting with me, and I'll see you back here at the studio for another lesson. Bye-bye.